Hello, I'm going to be doing another post-run review commentary on uh, Covenant 25 random random run I had. I'm not sure which format's better, so leave a comment if you have a strong preference. Um, live commentary, sometimes I have audio issues, so I'm giving this a go for a bit. Um, this one I decided, or it was random random, so I didn't decide anything, but I got Melting Remnant and Stygian. And it was against the Diligent. Uh, so I'm checking my cards here to see if either one of those go with it. And I don't have any cards that really capitalize on either one of these artifacts. Um, Iron Drop Cage could be good with Dripfall. Refracting Lens is good on the final fight where every spell is consumed. But I thought maybe it'd be good to have just a little bit of extra cash. Um, because I don't have really a win condition yet. I, I, um, I do have the Remnant Host, I believe, in my starting deck here. So I was looking for Harvest, and I found it, so that's great. I honestly do not do well with the Dark Calling at Covenant 25, so I probably was going to pick that regardless of my starting deck. I do want some more units, though, so I take the unit draft. And the damage shield on this guy is really... Uh, really kind of hurts the game plan here because I can't just jump block with the drag because then I won't do any damage. So I'm, I'm really not sure where to set up. Uh, I put him behind just for some extra damage. And then Ice Tornado clears it out. Gets me some early scaling. And then the Remnant Host is a great way to deal with that, because it'll follow up and remove the damage shield at the very least. And Remnant Host is really probably one of the best ways to support a Harvest Rector, so it's a really good starting with it. So I'm already up to 60 health, so plenty to deal with the boss. So got the collector, got the trial, pretty happy. Uh, I really don't want to go the burnout route, like extending burnout. So the other two options just didn't see, see, seem appealing. Um, and I just grab some frontline damage there. And here, uh, like the frostbite, I don't know if that is enough to, um, I mean, it would trigger some harvest stuff, but I decided to just go double up on my harvest synergies since I do have the remnant host. And because I have the remnant host here, I, I really wanted to go searching for unit upgrades. I already have kind of two units I want to focus on one floor, so getting that incant synergy would require a lot of deck dilution. So I was hoping for endless here, but uh, multi-strike is also very good. So the, I wanted both of those upgrades. And then I'm looking at the burnout here. So there's definitely situations where that guy will not get killed. So I wanted to make sure he will as soon as I play him. And then if I eventually get endless, that will just be a lot of free harvest uh, triggers. So spikes didn't really seem like a big issue, like it'll kill dregs, which sometimes could be good. And I'm hoping to have a pretty big health pool on my two harvest guys. Didn't have a chump blocker, so I wanted to set up on floor to hopefully draw into one. And I get the best one. Unfortunately, it does mean I, I don't have access to the collector. Not sure. I, I guess turn earlier I could have played a nice tornado. So it being the sweet boss uh, meant all that harvest scaling was pretty important. But I was already doing that anyway. OK, 
Okay, so Drip Fall is just a generically good thing, but uh, Molded is a way to bring back the Remnant Host since I don't have it endless yet, and then any other tombs I pick up. And yeah, Helical Crystal is just a good value spell. It doesn't really require a specific deck to be good. Uh, it's fairly cheap and it can be cheaper. I still really want the Endless, but um, I was actually looking for a Titan Sentry there. And I did, didn't want to put off getting spell upgrades forever. I was actually hoping for Holdover on Molded. But I do wanted, I did want to reduce the cost of some spells here, just so more stuff is playable. Yeah, getting the free molded means I don't have to decide between that, which is always going to be good, and uh, playing my spell, my other spells. So I give up. And this is something I see a lot of people do um, with this shop. So you give up a spell or a unit, it goes away for two battles, and then it gets a random buff. And I see uh, often people will use that to throw away stuff. So they'll give it a train steward, then you don't have to, have to deal with the train steward for a couple battles, and it comes back with a buff that probably doesn't matter. Um, same thing with torches and restores and stuff like that. Um, but I think the better way to use that is to give it an expensive spell that maybe, in this case, I put an expensive spell that probably couldn't play really most of the time. And two out of the three upgrades that you get from it make it free. So one of them makes it free and it um, is basically the equivalent of spreading spores. It makes a copy of itself, which for a Seraph the Diligent is really good. Um, because then you can you don't have to keep junk in your as much junk in your deck because you're going to be creating copies of the, that spell uh, so you can just keep high value spells in your deck so you don't draw into bad hands um, and then the other thing the two things it does is one of them gives you money when you play it and it becomes free uh, with the second upgrade and the third is it heals your pyre health. So, uh, with the three cost spell, that is pretty good. It does a, a good chunk of damage. Um, it becoming free is really good. So, that's why I gave up the Ice Tornado that I wasn't going to be able to play normally. It removes it from my deck, and then at worst, it heals my pyre health when I'm not able to play it. So, I kind of skipped the Daedalus fight uh, because of my my rant there, but it was pretty straightforward, just playing remnant hosts to scale up my two harvest units. Um, I'm looking at the Memento Mori here. I am going to be killing ideally like three or four units a turn with the remnant host being three of them. So it should scale up pretty well. And I, I didn't catch what I what else I drafted there, even though I just played this. Um, I was kind of torn, um, on this one, didn't really have a strong, I had some dupe targets, but, uh, I just wanted to, there's some artifacts that could really help out, and I wanted some more money for the future unit, or future, uh, merchants. So I think about taking the trail here, but I do have a lot of spell damage. In like this very situation, I wouldn't have been able to pierce through without spells. Yeah, and I, I fully intended to kill that collector there, um, but I kind of uh, screwed up a little bit. Um, but it's fine because it'll get frostbite. I am kind of low on damage at this point, but my cost reduced uh, Ice Tornado came in handy.
Really want that to scale my units. And I'm willing to take the pyre damage to kill all the units. So everything's fine, so I just take the three pyre damage from not being able to play that scourge. So another remnant host seemed like a good idea, even though I have one already that I'm hoping to make endless. So I get Ice Tornado back, and this is one of the two variants that makes it free, so I say, okay, give it back to me when it's free. Yeah, I forget where it was. It wasn't here. I definitely wanted to get some unit upgrades specifically endless but I would take another multi-strike um, some health on the Titan sentry a bunch of stuff I wanted so endless on the burnout remnant host means I can play it pretty much every turn um, and then health on Titan sentry is a good idea but I see large stone and it's even better so now he's fully upgraded and I don't really need unit upgrades, another one for the Baron would be good, but not as big a priority. Just seeing where the next one would be to see if I want to save it, and I do. Okay, so stealth here. And I decide, I forget where I decided to set up here. Oh, yeah, okay, so I made a bold move. I, th I thought that maybe I could scale up another enough health to deal with the stealth. And piercing through these, this wave is a little tricky, so I'm going to have to rely on some spells to finish that guy off. Fortunately, I do have that ice tornado. And the rest of those guys are going to just die from my Titan Sentry. And then my favorite unit of this run, the Remnant Host, shows up. I think I... Was ch yeah, checking something. Okay. Just throwing out another little more damage on the bottom there. Next turn, and then another Harvest Trigger. So now I can't play my Remnant Host. Okay, so with 175 health, I've scaled up enough to deal with the stealth. Intent on death, um, not sure if this was a good idea, I thought it was with the Remnant Host, but I'm still questioning that. Uh, maybe Fatal Melting would have been a better call. I get my free Ice Tornado. And now I kind of want to get spell upgrades. Looking for a holdover. Yeah, and then here Yin skin an upgrade slot is really tempting. My Baron getting two more upgrades. Um, I'm just looking at see when when I could manage that. I don't have that much money, but I figure I probably will be able to take advantage of it. So no holdover. Nothing that consumes. That one's not really playable yet. Double stack. So, this wasn't my plan coming into here, but double stack on Drip Falls seemed like a good idea. I don't really need to move my units to do damage, so just having it on the boss seemed like a decent idea. Okay, so... I was really concerned about getting through those statues. Yes. 
Scaling up a ton, but not doing a lot of damage. So I am going to take quite a bit of higher damage here. Uh, in retrospect, I, I'm not sure if setting up on the top would have been the right call, because it was reduced capacity. So killing that guy and not taking that much damage, so I decided to weaken this double tank wave. Things are under control now for the most part. I get my second remnant host. Just trying to figure out what dripfall target there is. I don't really come up with a solution. I probably should have done it to the boss though, at the very least. Titan Sentry is living quite a long time, all, all, all the way to the boss, which is pretty impressive, considering I didn't give it any help. I'm just playing out the Remnant Host there, not necessarily for the damage, although it does a little bit, but I wanted to make sure it was in my next hand. Okay, so 33 damage, I think that was just from one unit getting through, the first one. I decided to skip on that, I, I, I don't have extra Ember, and I wanted to take card draw there, so having another 3 cost spell would have been a little problematic. Yeah, I, I, I can't remember what path it was that I accidentally went the wrong path when I was looking. Um, it must have been that last decision where I went for the artifact um, instead of the merchant. Just reducing the average cost of my hand. And I just grab a spell that um, might help, but mainly I wanted a little bit more consumed water for the diligent. I, I don't have that many throwaway spells. I have Purifying Cleanse, which I don't really care about, and some Frozen Lances. But the spells I care about, some of them are expensive. So take a gamble here, I think I can handle it, and I really wanted money for the, the unit shop. So I realized that if I, I use Ice Tornado on the top, then I won't be able to live in the middle, so I decided to use the Titan Sentry to deal with the top. And I debated playing the Ice Tornado first, but then I wouldn't get any of the Harvest Triggers. So, I mean, it, it resulted in me taking 20 damage, but uh, Harvest Scaling is way better than that. Just getting 35 gold a turn is pretty nice. As well as just getting the, to the break point where I can kill things with it. Post here. I am going to get Ember Drained now, but the guy is 
dazed. For that turn. So, probably the the hardest wave is upcoming here with the double tanks. So I decided to get rid of one of them, and then that cost me dealing with. I should have frozen lanced the second backliner on the top because I always had this turn to play ice tornado. So with 500 health, not even close. Okay, so I don't really see oh, Bounding Stalker is way too late for. Mortal Entrapment is really tricky to make work. It's expensive, and I'm just trying to remember at this point if there is any debuffs that I need to worry about in the last fight um, and but there is one which is the top floor days so it's situationally okay for that um, I and I just take it as more consume fodder same thing with that I, I probably over prepare for Seraf the diligent it's just the the fight that has given me the most trouble I think so I, there's multi-strike in the unit shop, and um, I, I I check. I actually check the the trinket shop before spending money. So that is something that I've been meaning to do, but I haven't done yet. Um, so I get second multi-strike on the Baron, and the, I have a third unit upgrade shop or third unit upgrade. I considered re-rolling, but I'm not sure what I would get. Right, so I could get quick, which is not needed. I could get large stone, which might mess up my lane. So I decided just to get the plus 10. And with 300 gold left, I can basically buy one thing here. So I go looking for it. And just a little extra buffer in case things go poorly. And then for the dupe, I think, uh, yeah, the remnant host seemed like a strong idea. I, I do want to go with a unit based, you know, strategy and I have flickers liquor. Um, so just having every spell be free is nice. Even if I don't have that many of them. So I, going into this fight, definitely want to set up the Titan Sentry on the bottom uh, to deal with the extra blights, but unfortunately I don't get it. So the top floor is where I have the most capacity, and I think that's pretty important for my harvest stuff, so I set up there. And it also deals with the extra units that are spawned. Probably didn't need to consume that Frozen Lance, but it just means I'm not drawing it again. I, I don't really need to r remove days from anybody else on the top floor, so I decided that was a good time to get rid of that so I could play my ice tornadoes. Unfortunately, I don't have the same option this time. Yeah, if this were the Temperant, that guy, the Titan Sentry would be dead already, I think. So just deciding what spell to play. Or I already played a spell. Oh, I did, uh, Intent on Death. So 
So no room for the remnant host. Not sure why I felt the need to play the spells up there. I really should have played them in the middle. I'm just so used to having incants, I guess. Remnant host it is, and one guy is not being dealt with. Now I can play my ice tornado, which deals with that. I don't. I think this fight would have been a lot more difficult without the Titan Sentry, just uh, dealing with the bottom floor there. It does mean less. I get not as many harvest triggers, but I think that was worth it. Sadly, he's about to die. Just in time for relentless combat. So can't play my two remnant hosts. Not sure why I put him in the back. Really should have put him in the front. One round of days next turn. And pretty substantial lead here. I think I could have done another couple thousand damage. So, um, pretty fun run. I haven't. Uh, when I play Melting, I've mainly done Burnout, so it was nice to see a really strong Harvest setup. And um, really just seeing that early Remnant host kind of guided a lot of my decisions. So I, I just um, went all in on Harvest with my Baron and a couple Remnant hosts and then just using the spells from Stygian to weaken the front units enough so that we can harvest those as well. Um, so it's uh, been fun. I think I will keep this up. So uh, please like the video and comment if you have tips for getting better. Thanks.